Bodentown, and there are a couple of things I want to say about Bodentown. Bodentown and the Bodentown District is the only area in the Cayman Islands that was named after the founding fathers. Every other town and every other district carries a, na a, a, a name suited to their direction, like West Bay or whatever. This particular town was named after the founding fathers, and the district was named after the founding fathers. The role that Bodentown played, we call it the cradle of the nation. Everything began in this district. Parliament began here. Representative government began here. Education began here. And all of it, literally everything that happened in the Cayman Islands began right here in Bodentown. The churches, it, religion began in Bodentown and spread to the other districts. The Bodentown United Church, which is now called the Webster Memorial Church, that congregation was the first congregation to be constituted in the Cayman Islands. When Reverend Elmsley came to Georgetown, he was the person for the whole town, of, the whole island, of course. And when he came to Bodentown, first he met a lot of resistance. But once the people decided to follow the church, at one time they had almost 500 members in that church, it was the first congregation to be constituted in the Cayman Islands. So we were, we have, in fact, we have compiled the, the committee and I, this, is, this site is managed by the Bodentown Heritage Committee. We have compiled a list of what we call Bodentown First, literally hundreds of areas in which Bodentown was first. We had the first trained teacher in the Cayman Islands. We had the first trained nurse. We had the first trained public health nurse. This town is rich in history. And so when the quincentennial came up and everybody was trying to decide what to feature in their community, we decided to feature our role, not just in the Bodentown community, but in the entire Cayman Islands. Everything began here and spread from here. And so our committee, our committee got together and all our events featured the history of the Cayman Islands. We, we collected, we, we were never the, the thatch rope community. Um, they did, the people here did work for themselves. They made their own baskets, they, you know, they twisted their rope for, for their own purposes. And maybe they sold a little bit, but it was not the major source of their income. The major source of income for the women in Bodentown was their handiwork, their craft work. Mm. They did a tremendous amount of all kinds of crafts. And uh, so, and we have some, uh, have that Which showcase. Is very evident in this. Yes, we have it showcased yes. here. All of these things yes. in here is, is handmade by Miss Josie. Right. And um, so, when we were putting together, when we wanted to put together what the country was all about once the Queen Centennial was over and we had started this project before that we decided to make this a showpiece showcase of Bodentown's history and include as much of the other history as we could the tiles on the porch out there were made in the Cayman Islands at Rex Crichton's Tile Factory in Crew Road and then next door we have the Heritage House and that showcases the families the work they did they, um, we have a collections of sewing machines, we have collections of craft work, we have, we have collections of our history, we have pictures of our families, so that when we bring school children in here, we can say, that's your great grandmother, and she's on the wall, and they know who she is. They get a picture, a lot of them, a lot of the pictures we have, we salvaged from the Ivan Hurricane disaster, because we had showcased them before, in the uh, quincentennial and actually recorded them, photographed them and kept them so that when the originals were destroyed, we still had copies of them to be used. The Harry McCoy Park is a, um, features, has some very unique features. It has a children's playground, which is fenced for the children's safety. And in fact, the playground equipment is actually fenced inside the playground as well. Um, we have the old kitchen that was made from the 
lumber which was salvaged from the wreck of the Balboa. That was used and Mr. Hunter used that in his house and when they were demolishing his house, we salvaged some of it and made the old kitchen that we have in the back out of it. Um, the house itself is what, the main structure is Wattle and Dub. It was built in the late 1800s for, by William Webster when he married his wife, Katie Eden, his second wife from Savannah. She came from John Quine, Savannah. And the additions to it showcase how construction developed in the Cayman Islands. The throw off, as they called it, right mm -hmm. behind me here, is made out of poured concrete. When they would put, they would build the forms and pour the concrete between it and, and stuff beach rocks into it for strength. We didn't use iron, we didn't use steel. And then the final addition is out of wood. So it literally showcases how construction developed in the Cayman Islands in this building itself. Next door, that was a little cottage. And when Osborne was the minister in Baden Town, he helped us ex um, put it all under one roof. It was a little cottage with the little additions. Right. Put it all under one roof. They air conditioned it for us, refinished the walls. And because we, should, we do so many big events at this site, we, did, we ran out, we didn't have parking space. And we always had problems with people having to find somewhere to park. And so government owned the property in the back across the pond, and this property goes across the pond, and Osborne filled it in so that we could have parking for 92 parking spaces there. So any event that we have here, we have parking. The committee has also gone to, um, to work and built a flat uh, stage and covered it that can accommodate a full band. We have electricity to the stage. It can accommodate a full band for any events we have here. We have picnic tables. We have we have an old outhouse. We have we have a chick the kitchen coop. We've done everything we can to recreate for anyone who wants to visit the experience the experience of who we were, yeah. how it came about. Yeah. And like I said, the pictures on the walls showcase our people. That's our political corner with the speakers and the, um, the members who served in the Bodentown Parliament. These are pictures of uh, from the Bodentown era, their homes and um, a couple of them came from the archives which is not from our, our district. We have the picture of the plane that brought the Queen the first time, signed by the pilots that brought her in. We have the picture of uh, the British Airways when they came here the first time. We had the picture of the last of the slaves in Baden Town. And in that picture, it is an old lady that I don't know if you would remember her. She used to live down on Mance Road. We call her Aunt Cabby. And she lived to be 119. Her birth date is on the picture. And I knew her growing up. And her daughter lived to be 109. That's the one lady leaning over the door in that picture over there. Oh, okay. So anywhere you, any, an idea of, a dip, I mean, there's a washerwoman there. People did washing for, you know, how, and how they did it, they went, they would go to Georgetown and get the clothes, tie them up in a bundle, put them on the head and walk them to bottom down, wash, starch and iron them, and take them back to Georgetown the same way. They walked it. We, we, the women in the Cayman, in the Cayman community, in the Bodden Town community, were a very hard a lot of people. But they were also literate. It was an amazing thing when I was growing up, how many people could read and write in the Bodden Town district. They, um, and who read everything that was going on. My first introduction to history here was the fact that in our house, we had the three little booklets that Commissioner Hurst had written on the history of the Cayman Islands, the notes on the history of the Cayman Islands. And we had the booklets that the Commissioner Cardinal had done when he tried to introduce tourism here in the late 1930s before the war started and everything went kaput. It's, it's just, I was fascinated by that. And today the archives owns that book but it has never been printed again. It was reprinted back in the 50s, 60s, and um, the treasurer 
Cove store in Georgetown used to sell it for five shillings. They print, reprinted it as one book, yeah. and I have a copy of it in there. But there are not many, I don't know of too many people who have a copy of it anymore in the island. But it's a treasure trove of Caymanian history. That lists all the shopkeepers in the island in 1910. It's amazing. It lists all the, all the boats that were built and where they were lost and the hurricanes they were lost in. It tells us how people came here. You know, we found out one of the, two of the first early settlers here that were granted lands were women. And one was a lady named Mary Bodden. And there was a lot of speculation, even in the Hearst histories, as to where Mary Bodden's land was. And um, it was enclosed on crown, by crown lands. And everybody said, well, maybe it was Newlands. It wasn't Bodden Town. There was no seaside on it. Where was this land? And a couple of years ago, a gentleman walked in here from Honduras and gave us the history. He was a descendant of Mary Bodden. Mary Bodden came to the Cayman Islands. She came, they were going to the new territories, which was the United States. And they went to Jamaica first, and her husband died and left her with seven sons to raise. And they gave her a land grant in the Cayman Islands. And the section in Georgetown we call Maryland is where yeah. she lived. It was named after her. And when you look at the names of the Bodens in that Maryland street, all the way down North Church Street, the names of her sons are repeated in the names of those people. Amazing. So, you know, like I said, the, the, our history is such a, to me, it is the most fascinating thing. I can't read it enough. I can't study it enough. Yeah. And I just feel so upset when I realize that our children today are being deprived of that knowledge that was passed down. A lot of it was passed down orally, but a lot of it too is there. And I'm not talking about the political history now because I could write a, 10 books on that. Right. I'm talking about the people's history, the families who lived there, the things they did to survive. How they all evolved. And how it all evolved, you know. Um, and it was an, it was an amazing, um, when, when we became, when we finally married the justices and vestry because we had two houses to begin with, the upper house and the lower house. And we had a British commissioner come in. We ran our own government with our own head of state until the late 1800s when they brought um, Sanguinetti in here as a, as a commissioner and he was only here for a short time, he became ill and then they brought Commissioner Hearst in. Mm. But until that time, all the heads of state had been, or if heads of state as, as their term today, the people who were in charge of the colony were Camanians. You read me something interesting a while ago would, would you be would you like to, to yes read that for us uh, you know they used to make fun of us in um in jamaica because don't forget jamaica was the crown colony barbados was the crown colony they were that was where the the british government put their money that was where they did their investments that was where they set up their governments and they tacked us on to them so when the the grants were being given from to the territory, it was given to Jamaica, who never shared it with us, okay? And so we were, we were stuck with this idea that um, we didn't really belong anywhere. We actually petitioned the Queen and petitioned the governor of Jamaica to find out who we belonged to. Because were we a crown colony? Were we dependents of Jamaica? Who were we? And they finally answered it and at that point in time, of course, we had our parliament going here, our legislature going in the Cayman Islands. So when I tell you Bodentown is full of history, Bodentown is full of history. And uh, when we set up representative government, East End and North Side didn't have representatives and came and back because they weren't um, at that time big enough. They were given representation afterwards. Um, came and back, of course, was resettled after 1831, when the families who had come here, this is backtracking, Cayman Brack, Cayman Brack was the first settlement. The British gave them the option, because they were so hard to defend, of either moving to Jamaica, 
are coming to Grand Cayman. And they came to Grand Cayman because they didn't want to go to Jamaica. And so those families stayed here, the Fosters, the Riches, the Colonels, they, they, they all stayed in Cayman and then went back to Jamaica, went back to Cayman Brack and resettled Cayman Brack in these years. And so it's a, the evolution, mm. which is the, the topic that I addressed the parliamentary group on when they came to train the new parliamentarians after the 2013, the, the last election. Mr. Bush, you can do that. You can request the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association to send a group of trainers in. And I did the presentation on behalf of the Cayman Islands, the evolution of parliamentary democracy and the Cayman Islands Constitution. All of our women were excellent seamstresses. They sewed not just clothes for women, they sewed clothes for men. All, all the men's suits were made in Cayman. We didn't have ready-made stuff like they have now. Right. Everything was done here. And so they were, like I said, they were excellent needlewomen. And when we were in school, we were taught those skills. Mm. We were taught that um, this was a, a part of our, of our heritage of growing up. You were taught to crochet, you were taught to do tatting, you were taught to do embroidery. You, all, all the different arts, we were taught to do it here. And we actually sold it. I bought my school uniforms to go to Cayman High School out of crochet that I had sold in Georgetown. The first year I was here, um, Mrs. Flora Robinson, who was the first trained teacher in the Cayman Islands, uh, was the headmistress, and then she became ill. And in November that year, they brought in Mr. Spencer, Winston Churchill Spencer from Jamaica. And uh, he was, he was a teacher of not just reading, writing, and arithmetic. I learned to write poetry. I learned to write um, plays. I learned to draw in perspective. We didn't have crayons and stuff. Then we had a number two lead pencil that we used. Um, we learned to read maps. I, we could freehand the map of the world and put in every continent, every major uh, um, port, every all the trade winds, all the climates, all the oceans. We just learned to do that. Um, when I went to, the, when I did my first year at Jamaica Local and I got a scholarship, and they wanted to give in two. Cayman High School then was owned by the church and government gave two scholarships a year to go there. And I got one of them, but it was a four year scholarship. It wasn't a five-year scholarship, so I couldn't start in first form. I had to start in second form. Oh. And I had to figure out how to make up the difference that I had missed in algebra and geometry and Spanish and all those subjects. So, and we didn't have textbooks like they have today. You wrote a lot of notes. Yeah. You know, everything. On the, I did English history. I did English literature. We did manage to get a few books for English literature, but mostly the, his, the history was dictated. It was taught by a teacher who stood in front of us and lectured and you'd better write it down because if you didn't write it down you didn't have it, you know. And so it was it was such a different time than it is now because they set high expectations for children. And I think that's some of the things one of the things that we have failed to do. That and, and they did I told someone when I was uh, speaking at a public meeting one day, and they were talking about discipline, and they said, um, how did they discipline you? Because they, they, there was a lot of talk about beating. I said, well, you know, they didn't beat children then, how they beat them now. They didn't just hit them. When they beat you then, they said, I'm gonna tell you what I'm beating you for. And you, you could not embarrass the family. If you embarrass the family, you got one for that. And you could not, under any circumstance, talk that disrespect an older person. That was, that, th those are things mm -hmm. that you just did not do. It was just you know? accepted, that's the way yeah, it was. Yeah, but they, like I said, they, 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 would, they would beat you and they would say, I'm gonna make something out of you yet. 
that was always a theme. I'm going to make something out of you yet. Mind you, you didn't. You wonder what that something was going to be. You were, you were being beaten for a purpose. You were being beaten with a purpose. That's right. There was a purpose in mind and all of it. And of course, through all of my growing up years, the women were the predominant factor in the community because before the men went to sea on the, the turtle schooners and whatever else they could get on. Then they went to war. And in the house next door, we have a picture of the first group of men who went to the Trinidad Royal Navy as volunteers, taken by the, the post office in Georgetown. And uh, they, because Mr. Harry McCoy was among that first batch that went. That's right. And he was the, he was uh, given his, the BEM by the Queen for his service in, that, in the Royal Navy. And of course, he later on would acquire a lot of other um, awards for his contribution in the Cayman Islands history, which is why the park, we decided to name the park after him. And um, so then we went into the Southwell years. And basically, we had young little boys and, and old men because at 16, you, I know so many, well, they're men now, but young boys that I grew up with who tried to lie to Miss Gwen, who was a recruiter for social, South, South Wales, the Southwell um, ships, that, yeah, we were 16. Of course, I had to bring the passport. <laughs> and she wouldn't register them until they were 16 because they would try to get registered before that. So when they got to be 16, they could leave. And they would leave, you know, I did, um, Sammy, uh, Sammy uh, Jackson died recently, yeah. you know, and um, he left the island and went to sea. His first trip was four and a half years, you know, and that went, and then they would come home for just a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, and then they were gone again, you know, and um, it was one of the things that came out in his life story was the fact that he and Gay wrote each other for seven years before they got married. Writing letters. We were Writing. talking about that the other yes. day, communication. They, they communi they, my husband wrote me every day that we were apart, literally. Just all the things that was he was doing. He wrote you a diary, in fact. Just li literally, yes. Yeah which of course I shared with the children because yeah. I wanted them to know what their daddy was doing while he was away, you yeah. know. And uh, it, it, but the only means of communication then, and we, we forget this, in, in 1932 hurricane, there was no communication on this island, on any of the three islands. We had to wait for passing ships to, for them to, to, to tell them, so they could go to the world to tell them the devastation in this country. And, um, and then in 1934, they set up the first wireless station. And then in, um, from that wireless station flowed the communications. They set up a little telephone. And we have a copy, a replica of it over there in the house where you, this, it was put in the home of the person who distributed the mail. We didn't have post offices. so. You had one in spots in the Sirene's house and one in Bodentown in Aunt Dina's house. And um, just one in each district, in each area, each settlement, one in Breakers in the Snell's house. And you would ring it, so many rings for Bodentown, so many for West Bay, so many for Georgetown, whatever. And of course, as soon as that happened, everybody picked up the phone and heard what was happening that you were talking about. It didn't matter. So that was how you knew, you know, when my grand, my, my um, Great grandfather's boat went into West Bay in a storm to put off his two daughters, and he tried to get out with his two sons, and that boat was mashed up. It took days for the news to get back to Bodden Town that he and his two sons were lost, and the two girls were stranded in West Bay. Wow. So you know, it's a, it's, it. We've come such a long way in such a short time. Yeah. I think that is what boggles the mind of so many people who come here. It takes generations to build countries everywhere else. The Cayman Islands evolved. In 1950, we didn't have a dock. Our ships, our boats tied up to iron stake in the iron shore. Um, 
we didn't have, never mind the airport, we didn't have, a sh we didn't have any plane service. The only means of a communication, when I started school in, Bud in Georgetown, we had three cars in Budentown. You know, we, we, this, this stuff didn't exist, but I'll, I'll go back to Mr. Hunt, Mr. Um, Spencer again. When they brought the first radio to Budentown, we had a fundraiser in our school. Um, a concert. We, Bodentown was very, uh, very good at that kind of stuff. We did concerts for every reason under the sun. And so we had a fundraising concert to get the money to buy a radio for the school. And when the radio came, we were trying to figure out where the voice, where the person was that was talking, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and the older boys who, like Keith Jackson, you know, he said, see him there. And of course, it was a Telefunken radio, the big glass top. Uh -huh. And you, you know, when he looked in, of course, you saw his face and it was distorted. It's, <laughs> but that was, a, that was where we were at with that stuff. He taught us to read music. He wrote music notes on a, on a piece of board. He uh, um, drew the, uh, the organ or piano keyboard on a piece of board and taught us to read music. You know, all, all of all of these things I learned in a school that was just a, a community school, and we were, and uh, they call it all age school. And he made sure we learned all of this. We were given an opportunity that I don't think children get today. I don't well rounded think, education. A well rounded education, a background that you could go anywhere with. That's and you know. It is the reason why so many of our men could leave here with that basic education and parlay it into um, training as engineers and sea captains of some of the biggest oil tankers in the world because they had a strong foundation.